What is organic? Organic crops are grown without the use of chemical pesticides or fertilizers. Organic farmers build healthy soil, fertilizing and building the soil's organic matter through the use of cover crops, compost, and biologically based soil amendments. Organic meat, dairy products, and eggs are produced from animals which are fed organic feed and are usually allowed free range and outdoor access. Tricky terms. Um, certified organic is inspected and verified as following organic production, processing, and handling regulations. There's a term organic that's an unregulated term, typically a holistic system of production based on principles that support healthy food, land, and communities. Organic products <coughs> are produced using biological and ecological approaches instead of synthetic herbicides and pesticides, fertilizers, antibiotics, and hormones. Pesticide-free is also an unregulated term. No pesticides are used while the crops are growing. They may be used before seeding or after harvest. Fertilizers and GMOs are not necessarily banned. Natural is also an unregulated term that often refers to meat that is raised without growth hormones and is minimally processed. What is organic certification? The process is a verification that the operation is following organic standards. Certification agencies such as OCIA are accredited to the USDA to verify operations are following the standards. If an operation is found to be compliant, they receive an organic certificate and may use the term certified organic on their products. How to determine whether food is certified organic? Organic food and products can be recognized by the name or logo of an organic certifier on the label or packaging of the food. Without indication of certification with a recognized organic certifier, produced product cannot be considered organic. It is important to look for certification because a producer may use non-organic methods such as chemicals and falsely advertise their products as organic. The Organic Foods Production Act, or OFPA as the acronym, um, of 1990 is when it became law, and as part of that, the NOSB, the NOP, the National List. The National Organic Program is NOP, it has the final rule, it defines the organic method for producers and handlers, and it was published in 2000. The National List is a list of approved or prohibited substances. The National Organic Standards Board provides consultation to develop the organic certification program for propose substances to the national list and assist the development of standards for substances to be used in organic production. It provides advice on any other aspect of the implementation of the NOP. The NOSP is made up of organic farmers and processors, a retailer, a, an environmentalist, consumers, a certifier, <coughs> and an expert on ecology. Everything is subject to public comment. Their next meeting is in April in Washington, D.C. And then, how much will I make when selling organic products? Uh, conventional versus organic market reports. There's two websites on there, which you do have then in, on your handout, um, the addresses, if you can read them anyway, <coughs> um, where they do publish various crops and um, prices. Next. Who is the Organic Crop Improvement Association, or OCIA? The mission statement, or as providers and consumers of certified organic production, we are committed to environmentally sound stewardship. We're a not-for-profit organization. We're member, a member-owned organic certification agency. OCIA history. In 1985, a group of farmers in Albany, <coughs> New York, met and structured the concept of farmer-owned and farmer-controlled association. In 1988, OCIA International became incorporated as a not-for-profit organization. In 1997, OCIA moved from Ohio to Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, OCIA members include, um, to, t to have a chapter, it takes at least five members. Um, for instance, our chapter in Minnesota, we have um, we have like 140 members, but 110 of those are certified members. And we have like 20 that are corporate members, and then we have some supporting members. Supporting members are those that consist of people that are transitioning, and they, they call and they say, you know, I'm in my second year or my third year or first year of transitioning, and I'd like to have more information and what can I do. So they just become a supporting member of our chapter. 
And uh, they don't have to be inspected, but they just they have, they, they sign up. It costs forty dollars. So that's how we that's how we I, that's how we function. But uh, to be a chapter uh, of OCI, it only takes five members to become a, a, a actual uh, chapter. Mm -hmm. And they we host um, chapter meetings, farm tours, speakers, and more. Uh, they provide mentoring opportunities. Direct associates are farmers, processors, and handlers, and community grower groups are CGGs. The OCI structure is OCI International. It's the accredited certification body located in Lincoln, Nebraska. It has a nine-member um, board of directors. There's a research and education division, and this is a charitable organization, organization that supports organic research and educating organic producers. They are a four-member board of directors with two researchers. The regional staff is in the USA, Mexico, Canada, and Japan. And of course, the chapters, like I just told you, are very unique because we're the only certified agency that has chapters. And I believe there are 37 chapters total. Access to the global marketplace. Um, <coughs> that access, um, you get certified to the various uh, accreditors. Well, CIA has various accreditors they work with. We still have our OCI standards, and some of our members still certify to that standard. However, um, the other part of it is that um, with Japan and Canadian and EU, um, that addresses a lot of the access to global market. And as a US um, producer, you have to have at least NLP, at least the National Organic Program. That's your first certificate. The other ones are optional. And most of our members, in Minnesota at least, are only NLP. They don't do much beyond that. The organic plan under NLP, the producer or handler of a production or handling operation intending to sell, label, or represent agriculture products as organic must develop an organic production or handling system plan, the acronym OSP, which is used a lot. So if you hear that, that's what it means. Um, and it's agreed to by the producer and an accredited certifying agent. Okay. Well, your, your organic system plan <coughs> must include a description of practices and procedures to be performed and maintained, including the frequency with which they will be performed. A list of each substance to be used as production input, indicating its composition, source, locations, where it will be used, and documentation of commercial availabil availability as applicable. A description of the monitoring practices and procedures to be performed and maintained, including the frequency with which they will be performed to verify that the plan is effectively implemented. And also a description of the record keeping system implemented. A certified operation must implement measures necessary to prevent at all times contact of organic products with prohibited substances. And to prevent at all times commingling of NOP organic and non-organic product, so a separation or segregation rule. And if you're 100% organic in your equipment and so on, your storage and so on, it makes it a lot easier if you don't have any of those prohibited substances on your farm or in your processing operation. Um, organically produced food cannot contain ingredients produced <coughs> using genetic engineering, <coughs> sewage sludge, or ionizing radiation. <coughs> Excluding methods, methods used to genetically modify organisms are not considered compatible with organic production. So the GMO topic you hear a lot about, that's what that is. Sewage sludge, residue from the treatment of domestic sewage, domestic septage, etc. So those things are not allowed. <coughs> A uh, certified operation must maintain records to demonstrate compliance with OFPA and the NLP. Records to document the activities undertaken by an operator with a certifying agent used to verify compliance with the NLP. <laughs> records are any information in written, visual, electronic form that documents the activities undertaken by a producer, handler, or certifying agent to comply with the act and regulations in this part, and then NLP 205.2, which is meaning of words. So as you're preparing your OSP and your documentation, you're gonna want to have um, your fields numbered or named, and how many acres in a field, 
So it starts there, and then you also want to document your bins. They need to be um, named, numbered, and if they're dedicated organic or not, and your harvest records, all of that kind of thing, um, that guidance to the audit trail, that will tell you all the different things you need to keep track of. And then our chapter guidelines is something we have in Minnesota, which is the other document and is, um, I feel is helpful to our producers because it talks about crop rotations, it talks about somewhat inputs, one of those inputs being manure. And we've had some recent discussion as far as the manure um, that, um, and then I found this tip sheet about manure that Atra just put out. And one of the things about manure is that raw manure must not be um, used for land with production for human consumption. So if it's um, if you have manure available and it's raw, you have to compost it for human consumption. But for field crops that are not used by humans, then you can <coughs> use raw manure, you can spread raw manure. But then there's also the temperature when you put it on, that you're prohibited or whatever, and the number of days, depending on what you're producing. So um, that's somewhat in our chapter guidelines. I don't think I have all of that information in there, and that's something that our committee is gonna be working on to make sure that that statement is in there, that raw manure cannot be used for land where you're producing something for human consumption. Okay. So I, was, I guess I was just gonna point out too, if you are a new member to um, OCIA, this year you do get a $200 discount, and that's a complimentary one-time only uh, discount. So it's, it's a benefit. It's, uh, they've been, this is, I think, the second or third year that they've offered that. So it's something to think about if you're thinking of joining. Um, OCI certification process at a glance. The first thing you are is an applicant. <coughs> then you are uh, you get your in, the certifier in forms. And uh, it, the first thing you think about is the application complete. A lot of times um, we get the application and you know what's missing? The signature. And you, they cannot accept, in, international cannot accept your form without your, your signature on the last page. You wouldn't believe how many times a, a form is in, in the last page is sent back. So that's something to think about. Um, number three, get the free inspection review approved. Number four, on-site inspection is done. Number five, the inspection documents are received. And number six, the post-inspection file coordination and third-party incentive is reviewed, and then there's a decision made whether you're certified or not. And if, if, if that decision is that you're not certified at that time, that doesn't mean that it's over with. There may be some uh, things that are being reviewed or that you have time, maybe 30 days or 60 days to get into compliance. You'll get a letter from the international office saying you know you, that you have these recommendations and please take care of them. And uh, you have to comply with that before your certification is sent out to you. A lot of times you'll get your certification and then the lab will tell you that you've got this so many, you know, please have this done by a certain date. You must comply with that. Then you go to your cost of certification. Uh, so your direct associate is uh, so your certification fee is $800, and this depends upon your projected <coughs> revenue, your organic revenue, and your inspection fee is $600 to $1,000, and the international member fee is $95. And your chapter membership fee, now this is based on 2016 <coughs> projections. This, is, it, this has to be voted on. But a certification fee, and this is for your NLP cert, you know, that we had talked about earlier, this is the um, NLP certificate. One certificate is $325. Um, this is the certificate that everybody in the United States of America needs. The inspection fee runs from anywhere from $300 to $500, and this depends upon your acreage fee. That's like from zero to 350 acres would be like $300. And it keeps going up from that, depending upon how big of a farmer you are. The international member fee is $35. and acreage fee depends upon type of crops or livestock. Chapter dues, they depend upon which chapter you join. For our chapter, if you join, it's $40 a year annually. We ask that you pay that by February 1st of each year. What's the difference between a direct associate and a charter member? A chapter member? Yeah. Maybe you can answer that better than A lot of the direct associates are processors, um, and they don't necessarily go through the chapter as far as their certification and paperwork or whatever or 
education or that type of thing. But um, then a chapter member typically is the producer. Um, we do have some corporate supporting members in our chapter, and we um, have a newsletter I'll talk about later with their ads. So primarily, but a producer can be a direct associate if they want, if they figure they're in that. Um, based on your previous, that's what this is based on, the direct associates is your previous year's organic sales or your estimated sales if you're new. So up to $20,000 is 800, and I think actually with the budget they're presenting, it's 860 now. You probably would want to check with um, Jack, um, Mark Gooden uh, in sales before you were to join, you know, before you were to decide on what it would cost. Like our processors, we don't really, they're, they're smaller, and we, they don't pay like any fees to our chapter other than their membership. And they pay their inspection fees and their uh, certification fees directly to the international office. You mainly are just a member of our um, chapter. We just help you along. If that's what you're thinking. We don't. There are really no other fees associated <coughs> with our chapter. They are, all your fees go to um, the international office. Uh, let's see. Uh, the National Organics uh, Certification Cost Share Program. Approximately 11.5 million has dollars has been um, allocated for each fiscal year through 2018 for the NOC CFP. Eligible costs include application fees, inspection costs, fees related to equivalency agreements, travel for inspectors, user fees, sales assessments, and postage. This may uh, this is reimbursed for up to 75 percent of the cost of certification and up to a maximum. <coughs> Excuse me, of a, a $750 per category of certification. There's a website that, you, that we shared with you here. So please, uh, and there's also a person to call if you have any questions. Go ahead. If there are, if there are questions, go ahead. So, a question about travel for inspectors? If they charge you mileage, we mm -hmm. don't charge mileage, mm -hmm. but if the, if the inspector charges mileage, you can check that up to $750, you can actually use that. If you know, like some people don't have, um, you get, you can have a maximum of that, of that cost share up, up to seven hundred and fifty dollars. Then maybe you're gonna pick, for you if you were talking about an acre of vegetables or mm -hmm. something, you, your acre should be with probably maybe twenty dollars. You know, very little. So you know you would want to use your three hundred and twenty-five for your cert fee, three hundred dollars for your inspection fee, and if, let's just say your inspector charged you a uh, hundred dollars mm -hmm. to get to your farm and back you would be able to also incur that cost towards your cost share program. And remember, you don't get 100% of that, you get 75% of that. Mm -hmm. So it's a maximum of $750. So any inspector is going to charge you to come to your farm? Well, the only reason they would ever do that through OCI is that, let's just say, let's just say I'm the inspector, I, I um, made an appointment with you on Friday night, and you called him on Friday noon and you said, I, I have to break our appointment. Mm -hmm. He's already made arrangements with two other people mm -hmm. to fit around your farm, you know, your farm schedule. Mm -hmm. And now he has to come back to your farm by, you know, as, as a loan inspection. Mm -hmm. So he may um, say, well, okay, I'll come back the following week, but I'm gonna have to charge you mileage for it. Mm -hmm. So that's where that mileage will probably be incurred. I'm not saying for sure he would do that, mm -hmm. but you know, because maybe he'd try to work it in again for this next inspections in your area. Mm -hmm. They try to have it be the most cost effective for you. But that was, you know, every now and then you get that scenario where people are breaking their, their appointments. Sure. So in Minnesota. Okay, we got a question. Oh, okay. So per category. <coughs> I mean, you could, if you're a dairy farmer, you get 1500 crop and livestock? That's correct. So if you have livestock and you have grain, crop, you, you, it's two, yes, that's what you need. You have $1,500. 750 and 750. They're considered two separate. separate, separate. <coughs> okay, so in Minnesota, there is also the cost share program for transitioning <coughs> farmers. And um, it also includes, which the organic certified does not include, but your registration for the Minnesota Organic Conference or the Moses Conference, the little registration fees are also part of your expense as you're transitioning. And the Department of Ag feels that, and this is state funded, not USDA funded, 
The other um, cost share is funded through the USDA, and it's um, worked through the Department of Ag, but the transition is state funded for Minnesota only right now, as far as I know. Other states are looking at it. Um, but all those costs then add up and still at 75% or a maximum of $750 a year. And I have a, OCIA this first year will have a program for transitioning producers and I have one example, it's 15 pages of the application if you wanted to look at that. Um, they will not be giving a certificate or allow you to put a label on your product, but they would write you a letter that says you're in transition. And that letter would qualify you for the transition cost share for Minnesota. And their fee right now, they're looking at $600 for the, the letter, <laughs> not certificate, but the letter, and the inspection. So you'd have a $600 cost. And then add on your registration for the other organic events and whatever that would come to, 75%, whatever. So the transition thing with um, OCA International is for NOP crops only. So I said the rest. Okay, r &E, research and education. The mission statement is to support organic research, facilitate connections between farmers, researchers, consumers, and decision makers, and educate producers and communities regarding organic farming and tools. There's a fair amount here about the r &E, and they are having their meeting right now in the other room. Um, they have scholarship opportunities, and we'll go on to the next one. Um, you have this in your handout. They have micro grants. They do a farmer of the year. They do strategic partnerships, and that's with universities. The one that's in the packet, the example is with the University of Nebraska. Okay, they also have a crop improvement com committee that provides <coughs> a mentorship program where they pair those interests in learning with an OCI certified <coughs> organic farmer in their area. The mentees contact the mentor by phone or email <coughs> or discuss farming issues. They invite the mentor to visit the farm at least twice during the year and they complete a final evaluation form. And next. And this is Angie's um, address in Lincoln, Nebraska. We have many people in Minnesota that call our office and then what I do is I take down your name and number and email it to Angie. She's and she sends out a full packet. I usually send you out a, a Minnesota Chapter 1 membership form. Along with our most current newsletter, mm -hmm. I send you out a little brochure about our, um, our chapter and what we've done in the past so that you know what we're all about. And I'm, I'm a cheerleader for OCIA. So is Dieta, so is Dawn, so is Denise. And we, uh, we would encourage you to be 